So I'm with uh, Reeves Pod here, and uh, music is cranking here at the Royal Bermuda Yacht Club. It is Wednesday. I think all the finishers are, are there. There's got to be a couple more out there, right? There's a couple laggers. Are but they? I don't know. I think. And, uh, so I think the results are in. You won your class. How many times have you done that before? Won our class? Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm thinking it's seven or eight times maybe, and overall twice. Yes. And the Karina is legendary for obviously for a lot of reasons. I think it, you know you, you Google it and there's a beautiful history of it and all it's done. And oh really? I've yeah, never, yeah, I've never seen that. Yeah. <laughs> I really haven't. I should do that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. Yeah, you never look yourself up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Never thought about it. You know. Well, so for those who don't know the boat, um, do, do, do share a little history of it. Yeah. Well, Karina is a boat, uh, 48 foot aluminum sloop. Uh, Designed and built in 1969. Uh, designed by McCurdy and Rhodes in Long Island. Uh, built by Pash Boat Building in Erie, Pennsylvania. Famous boat building place. Yeah, the epicenter of boat building. <laughs> <laughs> 1969, uh, it was commissioned by the Nye family, Richard Nye, NYE family out of Greenwich, Connecticut, who were longtime sailors. They'd had other Karinas. And, um, and uh, they it was it was kind of fun to see running tide down here because they sailed in the 1970 Bermuda race and running tide that was their first Bermuda race running tide won class A Karina won class C or D and they won overall the St. David's trophy their first race and um, and uh, and then they went on to be very very successful the Nas are great sailors they had a great group of young guys from Greenwich they sailed on the boat and um, uh, then they won the, it wasn't the St. David's trophy it was they had two trophies in 1980 and they won one rule and somebody else had they won that and then in, um, and I took care of the boat in 1978 I was working at directors and um, the Nas wanted to have a modification because the CCA rule was slowly being phased out and the IR rule, IOR rule was coming in, which looked at different components of the boat differently. So they wanted a new keel, new rudder, new bustle and stuff. So um, I was working at directors and I was put in charge of doing that. And I didn't really know much about, I'm from Virginia, I didn't know much about this stuff. So anyhow, I cut the keel off, cut the rudder off, cut the back end of the boat off and rebuilt all that stuff. And um, I never sailed on the boat when the Nyes owned it. And uh, then I went to work for uh, Brewer Yacht Yards in Rhode Island, no, in, in, in Connecticut in 1980. And anyhow, Mr. Nye brought the boat up there uh, for me to work on it because we, we got along okay. So I worked on it for the next 10, 12, 13 years. And I remember writing Mr. Nye a note and said, if you ever decide to sell Karina, uh, all the guys in the yard and I, myself, love the boat. We fall in love with it. We love it. Anyhow, and he said, I, "Ain't gonna happen." Anyhow, but about three or four years later, he, he, his health turned south, and he, he wrote me a note and said, "Reeves, he said I've decided that I need to um, sell the Karina." He said, "Because I can't sail anymore," and I decided that either. Um, someone that's very, very wealthy, or someone who is uh, uh, owns a boat yard, ought to own this boat. <laughs> <laughs> a, a little premonition of what's to come, right? Yeah, yeah anyhow, so, uh, so I said, well, I'm, uh, I, I'm not a wealthy guy, so he said, well, make me an offer. So I, may, I wrote him a, a very flowery letter, and I'm an engineer, so I don't write very well, so and I basically said, I love the boat, I'd be honored to own it, this yet, or that this is how much I can afford. And he was a Wall, Wall Street tough, nice man. And he wrote me a note back, said, Reeves loves your letter, except for the last line. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, so uh, I, I called him or wrote him, I can't remember, and, and uh, sweetened the offer a little bit, but I asked him if I could pay it back over the next 10 years. Oh, wow. You know, and. He said, "Deal." Yeah, just one word. It doesn't happen anymore, does it? Yeah. No, he didn't. It was a deal, and I sent him a check every Christmas uh, for the boat, and uh, we started. The main reason I bought the boat 
It's one I just I just like the look of it and all that. It was um, uh, I've been doing some other sailing, you know, America's Cups and stuff like that, and um, and I was lucky enough to sail, you know, with Dennis Connor and Ted Turner and all those guys. Uh, but what was happening is my little boys were coming along. They were born in the middle of the 80s, and they they didn't get a chance to go sailing like that. So I figured I better own my own boat. So that's why we got Karina. That's great. And they've, as soon as they became of age, about 11 or 12 years old, they started sailing with us. They did their Bermuda race, and my nephew, Little Reeves, we call him, he sailed with us. And, and uh, ever, ever since then, we... Um, the crew were friends of mine that I'd sail with, Lexi Hagen, Bud Sutherland, Barrett Holby, um, gosh, and several other guys. And um, and to get them to go sailing with me, because I wasn't that good of a sailor, but to get them to go sailing with me, I invited their sons to come. <laughs> Anyhow, so we always had fathers and sons sailing. I think this, this race, we had four or five fathers and six or seven sons on the boat and a couple of you know, other guys, and yeah, yeah. anyhow, and we just love that. The, the boys of all, when they first started sailing, they were just little kids on the rail. They get sick the first night, and, and all that. And the guys did all the work, and as we, as we grew in our sailing career, the uh, boys got better and better. And and I think the only two years the boys did, my boys, didn't sail with me is when they were, in uh, special forces in the Marines over in Iraq. Yeah. And that was the only time they didn't sail. But, well, we kept doing it, and, and we have them all back. My son, one of my sons couldn't make it. He just had an emergency appendectomy just for the race, so he couldn't make it. But uh, that's kind of Karina's story, and yeah, we've been amazing. fortunate enough to do pretty well in some races. There's a lot to be said, right? I mean, we hear a lot about you know team chemistry and you know, yeah. this and that, but, but man, when you boil it down to you know the father-son chemistry, it's, it's the best. really nothing better, is it, right? Yeah. It's yeah. the best, and we did... Uh, you know, we've done several transatlantics and fastnets and stuff in 2010 and we won this race and and then in 2011 we did a transatlantic and we won our class in the fastnet race and um, I was all excited I said we've done the Bermuda race done the fastnet race let's go do Hobart yeah. and uh, and I was too cheap to pay to have the boat shipped down there so little Reeves and my two boys and a couple of friends took off and took the boat down to Australia and went down there and did that race and then they sailed it the rest of the way around the world. Yeah. Got these, and the, a lot of people say these boys are only, you know, early 20s. How do they know how to do it? I, so all I told them is I said, I want the boat back by, <laughs> by June 10th, <laughs> you know, and they did it. Yes, sir. And, and uh, we were fortunate enough to win that race yep. here too. And, yeah. uh, and, um, it was just great. It, yeah. it just couldn't be happier. Yeah. I and mean, winning races is great, but uh, we just love getting out there. And nowadays, all the boys that are older, they're there. I'm a granddad, several times over, and they have children, and they're all friends. It's it's the best. I can't imagine a better life than to have your kids come up and enjoy something you enjoy, and they have their friends or their best friends or their godparents be each other's kids yeah. and all. And, Lexi and Barrett and Bud and all these guys are my best friends. I, I'm, I'm, bl I'm a blessed person. Absolutely. And, blessed. Uh, but I need to just be able to get together but do something as great as we're able to do there, you know, sort of go out there in the ocean and, and work together to get yeah. here. You know? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's just terrific. It's just terrific. So let's um, wind it back then to, to the race itself. Um, Th this race? This race. We're talking about okay. this one. And... Uh, what was the winning strategy then, I guess, for you guys? Well, it was interesting yeah. before we, uh, when I found out that Stan was doing the race and before he and I got together and decided we were going to be partners, but even after that, I, I told him, I, I said, Stan, I said, uh, Devin Santa is our navigator who is very, very, very good. I mean, really good. And um, and I told, I told Devin when I heard that San, Stan and Sally and uh, Carl and all of them are going to be doing the race. I said, this is going to be simple. All we do is, I said, the first day, you know, Stan is on a, you know, smaller class, so he's going to be out in front of us an hour or so. And I said, but by the end of the first night or the next day, we'll have caught up with him, 
just always happens. I said, then I just want to stay between him and the goal line. I said, <laughs> I said it's not complicated. You don't need all those gadgets. Let's just stay between. Anyhow, then, and when, when Stan and I decided to do this together, uh, the, uh, I told him that, and he kind of chuckled. And uh, I said, now, Stan, I said, just to keep me from guessing, why don't you and, you and um, Devin, Santa, get together and, uh, and chat about what our strategy is since we're going for the team thing. And they did. And uh, I don't think there was any great secrets. Yeah. We kind of knew what was going to happen. And uh, it was fun. During the race, uh, it was fun because we could, you know, with the AIS, you can see what everybody's doing. Yeah. And um, which is, you know, some people like, some people don't. But uh, we were watching Stan. We were watching Froya, who was in our class. And our boats are almost sister ships. And, um, and we were just like this the whole way. And, uh, and, and a part of me was rooting for Stan. Really, I mean, one, he and Sally are dear friends and the nicest people in the world, and uh, and it was her last race. You saw it all published, and, and uh, I thought it'd be wonderful if they could win the race. But just for for uh, publication sake, I did nothing to make that happen. <laughs> I was trying to be. You did not sandbag. I yet. did not sandbag. I was trying to win. I wanted him to really win badly, yeah. but not that bad. <laughs> well, so let's presume you got here and you beat him. Uh, what would you have said? Well, you know, yeah, sorry, buddy, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I said, Stan, why don't you do it another time? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. do it another time. But yeah. that's sailboat racing. I think that there's viewer, not a whole lot of sports that you can compete at this level, and uh, with the same kind of competitiveness. And after after the sailboat race, you come in and have a beer together and yeah, yeah. enjoy it, and look forward for the next next time. And when you can do it with your family and friends, it's. it's, it's it's great. it's great. And how about the conditions for you? I mean, some of the a lot of the boats talk about the waves, the sea state. I mean, you've been through a lot with this boat, and uh, I guess was it tough, enjoyable, or just sort of yet another passage in the you know the story of the career? It was really another passage, and I'm not trying to sound yeah. tough. And I, you know, the '79 fast and race for Turner, on, yeah. and I, I've been on some rough stuff. Yeah, that sets a benchmark of sorts. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you, the toughest race I was ever in when I was 11 years old. My father was buying a Columbia 29 down in Virginia, and he and a, another friend of mine, the same age I was, um, were in a race down in the Chesapeake Bay. And a lot, it's a lot different when you're 30-some versus 11. Uh, but we got boats sank, people drowned. I mean, it was a nasty race. So that's been the benchmark for me. And the um, 79 Fastnet race was certainly not an easy thing, but we also had the best crew in the world, the best guys. And when you have the best guys and you have confidence in the boat, it's um, it's pretty good. And we have that now. And I think the uh, a lot of the, the standards that were reset after that in the 98 Hobart race, which was a tough one, uh, the safety of sea stuff, and Stan certainly had a lot to do with that. Rich DeMoulin and a lot of guys did. Um, I think we've all gotten a lot more careful, and I, was, I think we were all very sad to see the fella um, lose his life in this race. Uh, I mean, those things happen. I mean, I hate to see them happen, but, you know, there's not many things that guys do that aren't dangerous, right. yeah. that are fun, yeah. you know? <laughs> Crossing the street here, the street here in Bermuda. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, but my wife when I, I talked to my wife after I got in and uh, she said, "How are you doing? Everything okay?" And I said, "Yeah. Okay. Is there something wrong?" <laughs> you know? She said, "You know, Art Santry broke his boom. Somebody broke a mast. Three or four boats retired, and then a fella, you know, lost his life and and all that." I said, "Well, I, where we were, it wasn't that bad. It was sloppy." Downwind in the light air is a lot tougher than down in, downwind in the heavy air. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and that light air was our big old clunky boat. It, it kind of slopped around. But it was good. It was a great race. And it was a quick race. It was beautiful. The night skies were gorgeous. We had, you know, bigger than a half moon to start with. Uh, that's what we go out there for. As a matter of fact, a lot of people were always excited to get in after the race, get, you know, Kitchen Shoals, St. David's Light, the motor around and all. And I'm always a bit sad because yeah. I just like being out there. Yeah. I can keep 
just skip Bermuda and just keep going. Yeah, do your MOTCA moment, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's good. Yeah. I think we're all very fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, these last couple of nights, it's funny, I, I mean, the nights keep getting prettier here, and uh, I was thinking the same thing, and a couple of boats are still out there, you know, like, actually, it'd be really, you know, there's, like you said, you kind of want to finish, but you kind of want to stay out there, too, you know. Yeah, your competitive like, edge yeah. wants to finish, but yeah. that's why we do this, is to be out in those oceans, yeah. you know, with the endless horizons, uh, it's, it's just terrific. Cool. It's terrific. Well, so what was your, I mean, you've done so many, um, could you pinpoint a memorable moment of, of this trip so far? Of this trip? Of this one, this race, yeah. As a nice downwind race, you know. Yeah, well, it was it was downwind, and we uh, um, we have you know, several of the people on the boat have sailed on the boat a lot, yeah. and uh, Peter Bauer was with us, and one of our Transatlantics, 2015, I think it was. Uh, he was steering the boat, got it up to 21.7 knots, which uh, is Stan Beach on that one. Really. I know, I know, I know. Well, he's a, he, he's a downwind. We're yeah. we're a, yeah. and uh, we're like a hippopotamus. He's like an antelope going through there, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and we didn't hit it. We hit 16 something this time, but um, uh, it's fun yeah. doing that. But we we just try to be steady, yeah. you know, because we just aren't that big and fast. But, it's a safe boat. It's very quiet, and um, we try to be careful about the decisions we make. You know, we got 12, 12 people's lives on the boat, so that yeah. it's a big difference between being a crewman and an owner. Yeah. I'll tell you that. That's a huge difference. You always, you know, just matter of fact, the thing that scares me most about this race is guys, guys getting down here and renting mopeds. Right. <laughs> 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 and we've all done it. Yeah. We've all crashed. Yeah. And I just don't want to see anybody get hurt. Yeah, get it's kind of a dad yeah. and a boat owner. Yeah. Too. Make sure they get electric cars because those are the things on the island now, the little electric things. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. probably a little bit safer. Little safer, yeah. I yeah. guess. <laughs> Anyhow, the race itself was, it was good. We had a little bit of everything. Yeah. And I think that the, the, the confused seas and the light airs were the t hardest part. Yeah. When we got, when the wind got up above eight or nine knots, we started going the speed of the wind and and um, we were you know going 10 12 knots and that felt great yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. the light air and the sloppy stuff is confusing yeah. particularly when you have boats like Froya and, and illusion and boats back there you know that you can get up and go They'll and, keep going hard yeah yeah, yeah. We, we just we kind of look and uh, uh, Devin would say Froya picked up a half a mile on us or something like that so we we start working harder yeah, yeah. and all <laughs> and it was great fun because yeah. so many of these people are friends yeah. we've sailed against them for so long yeah. I don't know how many how many people have multiple Bermuda races on them but I think we figured on our boat we had 170 or 80 Bermuda races wow. and stuff and, and a lot of other people I'm sure have more yeah. but it's just fun bumping into people and I, I bump into a lot of people that I remember when they were kids, and now they're grown up and they have their kids. And yeah. It's fun. Yeah. And Bermuda is a wonderful place to yeah. come. You and that's the cool thing. It. I mean, obviously you got all the boats here, but the, the natural milling about here for three days, you know, as things happen, yeah. it's just such a great time to get And the hospitality yeah. genetics yeah. down here are, are the best anywhere in the world, I think. Everybody is polite, whether it's a taxi cab driver, a lady behind the desk, and, and just like Nikki tonight yeah. was helping. I mean, they just jump up and help you. Yeah. So it makes it fun to come here. It certainly does.